<音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音
uh, where we left off in the text, um, we're going to just uh, sort of um, not go through all of this. Um, but here uh, it, it said, uh, the last sentence, um, to, if you are um, uh, refuting um, a self uh, which has some kind of uh, different uh, nature or characteristics um, than the aggregates and you uh, refute that kind of self, um, then uh, by the force of that, uh, you also, it has the power to refute um, the self endowed with the three uh, characteristics. And here that's referring to um, a self which is a uh, permanent, unitary, and autonomous phenomena. And then um, here it moves to uh, this sort of um, refutation of establishment uh, by means of its own characteristics as um, the basis uh, of, of uh, designation or on, um, being established on the uh, basis of designation by means of its own characteristics according to the uh, mind only school. Um, so here this uh, references uh, back uh, to um, uh, page 69 in the Tibetan and the kind of uh, uh, refutations that were made um, there about um, why it is uh, that if uh, something were established uh, by means of its own characteristics or established uh, from its own uh, side, uh, the measure of that establishment would be that um, you you wouldn't need to uh, give a label uh, to anything. Um, so for example, uh, a, a bulbous uh, thing, um, you would just know that it is uh, called a from its own side if it were um, established by means of its own um, characteristics. So there were some um, uh, 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 sort of logical reasoning that um, happened on page uh, 69 and this is uh, related to that. Um, and so uh, then here um, it's going to go uh, through uh, some reasonings that are uh, provided uh, from Asanga's uh, Compendium of the Great Vehicle, um, where he uh, exp where he says, um, and this is sort of uh, short and pithy, but it says that um, uh, to have uh, because you don't have the mind uh, before the name, and uh, because it would become many and it wouldn't be uh, definite, um, and so uh, the the self would become many, um, and uh, a like self would be established as contradictory. So here it'll go through these uh, various um, reasonings. And so here, uh, what is being uh, refuted or um, showing the contradiction of asserting a kind of self of phenomena. So it's a phenomena being established by means of their own characteristics or being established from their own side. So here, the first of um, the uh, arguments uh, against uh, that kind of establishment um, here uses uh, the example of um, something that we would call a vase. Um, but uh, so you see the, the subject, a bulbous thing with a long neck, um, uh, merely upon seeing that, um, you would have, you would give rise, it would follow that you would give rise to this mind thinking pot um, without having to uh, rely upon having given that designation pot or vase to this thing um, if it were established from its own side by means of its own sort of uh, mode of existence um, as a pot, then uh, you would have this mind which thinks pot without having to rely upon actually designating that thing as such. So from just seeing um, this sort of flat bottom bulbous uh, thing, you would have the mind um, thinking pot and uh, without having to rely upon um, giving it uh, a, a name or a label, applying that term to that particular basis. So um, here it is uh, refuting um, the possibility of being um, established by means of its own characteristics on that basis of conceptual designation without having to rely upon the conceptual designation. Oh yeah, that thing that is <laughs> what I said, right? That turn chicken, that is <laughs> our midget, right? Turn chicken, and it turns it down in my book, I will repart it. And it's a career, son, that is <laughs> now. Yajin Kanaya
Well, yeah. So um, then um, the second uh, sort of um, uh, argument uh, here or logical thing is showing um, the contradiction that um, if you have a single uh, thing um, and that uh, that it would follow um, if there is uh, if there are multiple names multiple labels given to one um, single thing then it would follow uh, that um, it, there would be this contradiction that there would be many selves so they give uh, the example of um, it's Indra, right? In Indra, um, who has uh, multiple names, uh, such as like um, uh, the destroyer of the mountain and the destroyer of cities and so forth. And so uh, this uh, this one person has these various names. And so if it were the case that um, the uh, without having to apply that term or apply that name, it were existent from its own side, it would follow that there would be multiple selves. So here it says the subject um, Indra, um, it would follow that there are uh, multiple sort of uh, continuums of the person um, because there are, uh, the, we see that there are these uh, various labels applied uh, to that uh, one person. So uh, you, Indra, are called things like uh, the destroyer of mountains, destroyer of cities, and so forth. And if it were the case that um, all of these uh, things were uh, existent in a way that they didn't have to rely upon being labeled, if that were, if they were existent by means of their own characteristics from their own side, then it would follow that there would be multiple selves for these multiple uh, names uh, that are that don't have to be given. Um, and so uh, here, this um, is demonstrating the consequence uh, that uh, something that has multiple names to it, it would follow that there would be multiple selves. This contradiction would come. Oh, yeah, that did. ตาตานี่ดังมันเรียกว่าการเรียนรู้ประเทศเราเขาสั่งยิ่งเต็มมันเรียกว่าการีอันนี้เรียกว่าจุดเดียวเราอันนี้ตาเรียนรู้ประเ
Sunya chashi du na chashi ji na wa ta tu ma chuba na shi cha ni Ani sunji zhe ta ta tu chuba na ya na wa ta ma chuba kwa ba ki Mila mta sunya la sove ju ba cha Shwa ta rob ta cha ka na Nyi shu wan du cha me kwa bi ju ba sa ye de la Ani ka tu du cha me yu na Ta ka sa nga ma shi wa na shi cha ni Chuk ji cha kwa wa na cha ra du cha du cha ti ni cho Kongbu ji kongbu ji ka ta Kongbu ya chik tu chuk ru se ka na ta ka sa ye ka na Yi du cha mo ji la cho ji cho ji du ju kwa wa te na Ani yu du di cha me ye na ani yu du di ki ka so re ma ri na ni Ka so yu ri na yu du di la shen wu du ji ri na Ani sha ji du ji ri ba ti sha ji du ji ri ba ti tang So yu du ji ri ba ti ki cha nyi yu kuru re es Cha nyi me na ani sha nu du yu wu di dre ko wa dre wa ta yu jyun wa yi Ta ten de ki ka so re du cha me kwa bi ri ba yi tang sha la ri Shanu ki du ni u la ri bi cha na ka la Shar ji ri ane du di ki u la ri bi cha ji ta Nub ji du di ki u la ri bi cha ji ki ni yo ko re es Te me na ane shanu ki du ni wo te Du ji te wa ta ki ji Du ji tu te wa ki ra Ta du so ro bi cha din di ji ri mba re Ni shi wa du cha me ko bi ri ba ta Nam ji ji Sun ji ji sa ni ke la trao ko bi ri ba ta ki ka na Ani da di pan cha di yi na vya sa Sun ji sa ni ke la trao bi ka ma so ba sa na Ani do de wa ki Sun ji sa ma di Ani su la te na ke wa Su ji mi ke che Ani te la te na sun ji mi se ke Ma su da sun ji mi se ni wo te zae ta da te chupa chi ro tun te chupa Da sen sa mi lo la Ani su da sun ji mi se ni wo te zae chi ki yin zang O sun ji mi se di su ji Ani kaasem yu jen chewa la tena kewa to koba yin san di yin jire sa wa sun zin san yi kye la trawa kobe ri pa Ya uh, so um, here, uh, then it continues um, saying that um, uh, these um, three uh, reasonings here, um, other uh, than um, the other than the sort of um, particular characteristics of uh, the object of negation, the way that they proceed with these um, reasonings is similar, appears as being similar to um, the middle way uh, school, and so as for um, the uh, the refutation of um, a, a perceiving uh, subject and a perceived object as being established as substantially different. Um, so again, that is uh, what uh, the uh, mind-only school refutes. Uh, so again, from um, the uh, compendium uh, on the great vehicle by Asanga, um, there are the uh, reasonings of um, things being like a dream, using the example of a dream and a reflection. Uh, so in the way that uh, things appear uh, to us in a dream as though or external objects, they're not established as such, or uh, like the way that a reflection of a face appears uh, to be a real face, but is not um, established as, as such. And so um, they use uh, this sort of reasoning um, to uh, refute there being um, any sort of substantial uh, difference between um, the perceiving uh, subject and the perceived object. Um, and so here uh, then, um, it uh, goes into uh, the, the sort of, um, there are different uh, reasonings as well for uh, refuting um, the existence of partless uh, particles. Uh, so again, this is getting um, to those uh, lower tenant schools who assert that there are uh, external objects um, that are the aggregation, um, uh, the sort of a coarse aggregation of these partless particles. Well, you run into the problem that if a particle is partless, how does it uh, connect or mix with other particles? If you don't have, a, like, say, a west side of a particle to meet with the east side of another, it doesn't, you can't um, have the aggregation of those particles. So um, th there are uh, various uh, different uh, uh, refutations of there being um, uh, partless uh, particles. Uh, we don't need to get into all of those, but um, there are uh, ways that they go about refuting um, the, the existence of such uh, partless particles aggregating together to create coarse external forms. Um, and then, uh, so, for example, with the um, 
In, um, in the mind only school, um, a valid uh, cognition and the uh, object that it perceives are asserted to be uh, the same substance. They aren't uh, asserted to be substantially different. But if you take uh, someone like the uh, Sutra school, they say that um, an external object, um, an object uh, s uh, that is a different substance from that valid cognition, is actually the object condition, a cause of the perceiving consciousness. So say, for example, there's a form out there and that act as a um, object condition to be able to have a perception of it and so uh, for them they assert that, that there's like a, a temporal difference there's the the, the the cause is having this external object which then leads to a visual perception uh, whereas for the mind only school they say that um, the uh, apprehended and apprehender are uh, empty of being uh, substantially different and so uh, they, they refute um, the, the sort of uh, a, a, um, assertions made by those like the Sutra school who say that there are externally established objects that act as conditions for our perception of them. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sundinsana Nambatabayinza. なんか Okay, so um, then uh, here it uh, gets into um, how uh, then um, the mind-only school uh, uses uh, certain reasonings uh, to refute there being um, sort of uh, in a thing that is apprehended, which is a, a separate uh, substance um, from the perceiving consciousness. Uh, so here it's like um, there is, uh, when we apprehend uh, something, for example, uh, like a, a patch of blue, um, that uh, blue uh, is is in um, the aspect of uh, that which is apprehended, but it's not um, substantially different from uh, the visual consciousness which is apprehending it. Um, so it acts as like the the object um, condition for that uh, visual consciousness, but it's not um, external or a different uh, substance uh, from the perceiving consciousness. But rather, it's like a a um, an aspect of a similar type um, in that uh, the um, uh, I don't know. So, um, in that, uh, the, the object um, taken, so when you have like um, the, the sutra school where there's some sort of external object uh, which is a, a separate substance from the perceiving consciousness that acts as a condition for um, the, the perceiving consciousness, here, according to the mind only school, there is um, uh, this sort of aspect of the apprehended that appears for the consciousness, but it's not of a totally dissimilar type. They're of the same um, substance and it's still 
acting as a cause to have the apprehension of blue, um, but it's not uh, some sort of uh, thing that is external to the perceiving consciousness. Um, there is this aspect of uh, the blue that is um, perceived uh, by um, uh, the consciousness um, that is the same substance. Um, and so here, uh, if you really want to know about this, um, you could look in uh, uh, the yeah. Chang'en Nam. <laughs> ほら。<笑><笑> Mundi so um, here, uh, this, um, sorry, um, the mind only school, uh, they would uh, assert that um, there is uh, this blue and it, it, and, um, it, it appears uh, to the uh, perceiving um, consciousness um, in such a way that um, although it's like the, the perceiving consciousness is uh, mistaken with respect to it being an external object, it still uh, appears like it, in the way that it is such that um, the perceiving uh, consciousness can be unmistaken with respect uh, to that uh, that object, that blue that it is perceiving. So um, although uh, there is no um, sort of um, external object, external blue that is acting as the cause to then give rise to this visual consciousness, but you have this um, sort of aspect of blue and it appears in the way that um, it is. I mean, other, th other than it being a mistaken, um, so it's not a mistaken consciousness. They, the way that you ha would have to posit um, it as being mistaken or not, um, here it's it's not mistaken because the um, visual consciousness correctly um, apprehends the, the aspect of blue. Um, so here it's like the object uh, condition for then having a visual consciousness perceiving blue, and uh, one can say that uh, that um, visual consciousness is not uh, mistaken with respect to uh, the blue that is appearing to it. The <laughs> あの、だちだにすなよ、わしてきくよあれ。それは、だちだにきくよあれで、ランダンドライブナバテゴマレ。それは、目玉で、だちで、これだちだにすなばなんばしゃくよ。あれは、いざランダンドライブマテバチ。
In the case of uh, when you perceive um, the moon as being double, uh, in that that double moon um, is the uh, object uh, condition, um, but it doesn't uh, represent like how the object actually is. It's a mistaken condi uh, It's a mistaken um, cognition. And so um, here, uh, there's this uh, term in the Tibetan sungdun. And so although uh, the 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 two moons um, or the the appearance of the two moons is the the uh, object condition, um, it's not the uh, sungdun um, because it is. Um, <laughs> I don't know, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so here, uh, what it's trying to get at is that um, the, the difference between a mistaken uh, cognition, so like in the case where you perceive um, blue, uh, that uh, according to the mind-only school, um, that blue that appears, that aspect of the blue, um, is actually a representative of the way that that object exists. And so that uh, blue is both the um, object condition for having a visual consciousness apprehending blue, as well as um, the apprehended meaning you've gotten at that blue. Uh, whereas in the case of uh, seeing um, a double moon instead of a single moon, um, that uh, appearance of the double moon is the uh, object um, condition, but it's not um, the apprehended uh, meaning because that's... What? Yeah, it's not the apprehended meaning because it's a, a wrong cognition. That... <laughs> Cassoon, Tadu so um, here then, uh, moving on, um, it says that um, there are, uh, according to the uh, autonomous school, just to read through this, there are um, various um, sort of uh, different ways, different um, logical reasonings that they employ in order to uh, refute the object of negation. Um, so there is um, a reasoning um, that is a, neg a negation um, by means of direct uh, relation, um, by not actually seeing a direct relation, and then there are um, those uh, types of reasonings um, in which uh, one observes an inconsistency or observes um, some kind of uh, discrepancy there and they use um, these two types of um, logical reasoning in order to um, pr to refute uh, the object of negation, um, but you can learn about that elsewhere. So here um, then it says, <clears throat> continuing on, that if one um, refutes uh, a more subtle self, uh, then by uh, the way, uh, along the way, by implication, one also uh, refutes a uh, more coarse uh, self uh, of, of, of persons or phenomena. Um, so it said that if you refute a more subtle self, you've uh, by by the power of that also refuted uh, the more coarse ones. And so um, here it, it then continues saying that um, the uh, logical proof of dependent origination, independent independence upon the logical proof of dependent origination, uh, one is able to uh, destroy all um, sort of object uh, gr grasping um, ultimate object which is, which is the root of samsara. So here, uh, one is able to destroy any sort of conceived object, an object um, conceived of as being um, intrinsically existent or existent by means of its own characteristics by relying upon this logical proof of um, dependent origination. Um, that proof is able to uh, refute the ignorance, which is the uh, root cause of cycling in samsara. And so not only um, is one able to uh, get rid of any sort of um, conceived object of this uh, grasping at true existence or grasping at things as though they had some kind of intrinsic existence. There are also a number of special purposes of using this particular uh, logical proof. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kanam 
Ani tenji dewa chuma yinza, ani rangong rangong oyo chibi ngo ni meba, rangong oyo ngo ni meba. Tena ngo ni chime chewa ti, ngo na ngo ni chita rangi ni meba. Shwa meba ti jinja kare re sana ta tenji kasa ngama chuma na se tenji dewa chuma chuma imbe chile. Di pela meno na gche si ni chuma chuma pe ko imbare. Oya. So um, then uh, here, uh, continuing, there is a quotation uh, from uh, the sutra uh, r- requested by uh, Sagar Mati, I think, um, the ocean of uh, intelligence, um, someone's name. Uh, and so here it says then, uh, whatever is uh, dependently originated, um, that is not existent by means of its own nature. It's not existent by means of its own um, characteristics or established intrinsically. So uh, whatever um, internal and external phenomena there are, uh, none of them have uh, this existence by means of their own essence or nature, have any kind of intrinsic existence, um, and by uh, realizing that they are dependently originated, one is able to realize that they lack that kind of intrinsic existence. And so here it then um, uses this uh, proof saying, uh, the subject, uh, things, um, are not um, existent by means of their own uh, nature or intrinsically existent uh, because they are dependently originated. And then it lays out um, the example. Uh, For example, uh, like a reflection of a face in a mirror or like a reflection in a mirror, but here, um, like the way that a face appears in a mirror, uh, these uh, things are uh, dependently originated and thus not intrinsically existent. Oh, yeah. So tender what they see we send a jit and then the what they then you the only the me to be send up it and this is a trouble and you are my job about a trouble and then you tend to saw us on us do not the time you let them do not send a career as an a condition to go or as an attack then I can't send a meter back up then a pump machine and a dry on chess or sena ตัวอะไรเนี่ยขันเชียวอีนะมีตาเป็นกูเรสเป็นอะไรเรสนะพุ่มบัตรเรสอีตายอันเชียวอะไรเรสนะเชียวสนะตุงอาเชียวว่า
So, um, sorry, so here uh, to lay out uh, the proof statement, uh, for example, would be um, uh, a pot, um, it, it follows that it is uh, impermanent uh, because it is uh, a product. Um, and then you could uh, like say that uh, whatever, so whatever is impermanent is a product. And then you say, for example, like sound. Um, so in this in this example, you are laying out um, the the proof in full. Um, you you show uh, that whatever is impermanent um, is necessarily a product. And then you can give like an example like a sound. Um, so that would be um, a proof statement where you're actually laying out um, what you are trying to prove. And then there would be um, the opposite of, of that, where you are uh, showing um, sort of the, the unwanted consequences that would come about um, from um, uh, f from asserting the opposite. So, for example, uh, a, a consequence uh, statement could be something like... Um, <clears throat> Um, a pot is um, permanent because it is not a product. So by recognizing, well, that's not right, um, that the, a pot is a product, uh, you then come to realize the inverse of that. You see that it must be impermanent because it is a product. So um, the way that uh, the various uh, different tenant schools rely upon these types of logical reasonings, either laying out a proof statement or using consequences in order to uh, generate understanding of that which is to be established. So in the case of the consequence, you're trying to establish the opposite thing. You're trying to establish that a pot really is impermanent because it is a product, but by laying out um, a syllogism or saying that um, a pot, it follows that it's permanent because it it is not a product, um, then recognizing the, the wrong consequence that would come from that one comes to a realization of that which is to be established, that the pot is impermanent. So here um, there are different uh, methods that are used used by the different um, tenant schools, um, the higher and lower, uh, in terms of using these types of logical reasoning, especially the uh, consequences. No. Uh, so here um, you could uh, lay out all of this uh, together uh, with the example uh, like saying um a thing um, is not uh, dependently originated uh, because it is truly established. Um, and then there, uh, you would see that, um, sorry, so that's uh, stating the consequence. Um, but then, um, if you were to lay out uh, the actual uh, proof statement, uh, you would say, uh, well, actually, things are um, dependently originated <clears throat> um, because they are not truly existent. And you establish um, the pervasion between something not being truly existent existent and being um, dependently originated and then um, lay out an example uh, for example like a reflection uh, so that would be to um, lay out the proof statement um, as opposed to uh, the original statement which is a uh, leading one to an unwanted consequence um, that then uh, generates an understanding uh, of the opposite oh yeah だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ
Contoh ketawa je, contoh ketawa. Yo, tapa dah tahu saja. Oh, tenur je tawa dia. Tada, tada, contoh je tawa. Tapi ni kan ni wajah kan ni, kini ni wajah kan ni. Sana kasih cem masih bas. Rasi je cuba kasi cem, tak kasih orang tu mampu sihat lah. Rasi je cuba kasi cem kasi, kasih cem masih bas. Tak tanya, rasi je macam mana? Ani tanya mereka wah. Rasi ini mesti nak mereka wah. Jadi tenjung kini awak lah, ni awak ramu lah cangdu mereka. Rasi ini mereka, ane jadi tenjung juga semua tu bah. Rasi juga na, ane jadi tenjung orang tu aja mereka sah, mereka sah ni. Di di mungkin orang tu cakap mereka tu, ane cipta dah kudus kita wah. Tawa lah, ruang ya. So um, here, uh, with regards to um, how uh, then um, it is that one generates certainty, independence upon um, this uh, logical proof, and how that is then able to uh, eliminate the two extremes, this is something that we have uh, gone through um, here before. And so uh, for those um, from the... Um, small lam rim, it says then that um, those uh, who have, um, to, in order to get to the pure view, um, there are two uh, main like points of error or places where people go wrong um, that are hindrances to uh, coming to the pure view. So um, here, if you have uh, the... Um, the proof statement that um, uh, like phenomena are uh, not intrinsically existent uh, because they are dependently originated. Um, there are two. There are ways in which you can uh, go wrong with one's understanding of this. So um, one is uh, tending towards um, the extreme of permanence or towards um, some kind of reification or exaggeration of existence. So here, this is uh, where one um, is holding to um, a sort of uh, conceived object. Uh, that is uh, grasped as being truly existent. So when one holds things to be um, truly existent, uh, doesn't know how they could be uh, dependently originated uh, without being truly existent, um, that person is falling into this extreme of permanence, into a kind of uh, reification or exaggeration of the way that uh, things actually exist. And um, then in the other case, uh, they would uh, fall into the kind of um, extreme of nihilism uh, because uh, they, they uh, overly, they having misunderstood uh, the extent of the object of negation, they go too far in their negation, and therefore um, they, they uh, don't um, see how things could be, um, they don't have a certainty uh, about uh, things being dependently originated, arising from causes and uh, effects, uh, arising from causes and so forth, uh, because they have uh, completely um, negated too far. They have um, uh, misapprehended the extent of what it is that they are to negate. And so um, then uh, they haven't uh, really um, found a way to properly uh, have a grounds of identifying things, saying this is this or this is that, and they fall into a uh, view of deprecation or the kind of a nihilistic view um, which denies uh, existence that is actually there. Oh, yeah. Tenderly, I need to talk that. Tondoni ตาตรงตัวกิตาตาตาเราเยอะไปนะบ้างมันจะไม่เป็นสิบเปอร์เซ็นต์งูจะงูไม่เสียชีวิตตาเราชอบกันตาเราชอบกันสิคุณเดิน
Rwata jina chiba che che beta da me beta. So um, here, uh, this is um, as we saw uh, earlier uh, in the day, talking about um, being free from the two extremes. Um, so here, it's referring to a view of permanence um, and a view of um, a sort of annihilation. Um, but you could also be uh, referring to uh, the, the word ta, like as in um, extreme. And so um, here, uh, as we saw in the Nagarjuna quote of not um, grasping at either ex an extreme of existence or an extreme of non-existence. Here, the extreme of uh, existence uh, would be uh, asserting that things are truly existent, that um, although they, they try to assert that they are dependently originated, um, someone is grasping at um, phenomena as though they had some kind of existence, intrinsic existence, above and beyond uh, what they actually have. So that extreme is the extreme of permanence, is the extreme of exaggeration or reification of things. And then um, on the other uh, extreme is to think that if you refute intrinsic existence, then you have refuted um, all existence whatsoever. And so falling into an extreme of um, annihilation or nihilism, uh, wherein one is denying existence that is actually there. Um, so here, uh, this, um, these are the two sort of extremes one can fall in if you don't um, have the proper understanding of, uh, of uh, what um, existence uh, versus uh, like intrinsic existence and um, conventional uh, uh, um, being totally non-existent and not being intrinsically existent, um, if one is unable to distinguish between those, then uh, one falls into these extremes. Oh yeah, that tend to be asore cheta tata da meta niwote. Yana kunde da tata chibare doa. Oh yeah, trondo tata da meta niw cheta niwote. Yow tend to be cheta tini ni. The Kadis is an Eugene Dile, Joan Dijon, she and Tendilan or Trabba, Eugene, Tendilan or Trabbi, Tendilla Tene, and then I want to Matua, I want to Rashidi to a Cabana, and the Tata Tigi, she knew Rashidi to a Cuba, Rashidi to a Tiki, Rashidi to a Cabana, and the Castle. Maliba Pomayi, say, or Rashidi to a governor, and it Tamalu Dondo, Rashidi to a Dodo de Dondo, and it Tata Tema, and it Kapa Shabam, Kokabana, Maliba Pomayi, they say, either Tendigin, our Trambala, then eh, Cheta, Tendigin, our Tramba, you get a give eh. Isn't so um, here, uh, then again, um, someone who um, falls into a mistaken um, understanding, um, they don't have the ability uh, to uh, grasp, to identify uh, this cause leads to this effect, um, and, and so forth. And so in that way, without having um, having refuted intrinsic existence, they no longer feel like they have a ground to be able to identify and posit cause and effect. And so um, that individual falls into a view of annihilation or um, denying existence. And so um, here, as for these uh, two, if you are able to um, <clears throat> uh, so um, uh, if, uh, independence upon um, this uh, logical uh, proof with, which brings forth a uh, certainty in um, dependent origination that uh, this cause um, and condition leads to this um, effect um, if one then um, refutes uh, intrinsic establishment um, they they end up uh, like abandoning um, everything so here uh, this is again someone who is um, by refuting intrinsic existence feels that they are unable to um, posit uh, fully that that um, that uh, there is cause and effect. They can't posit dependent origination within having refuted intrinsic existence. 
So um, here, uh, if if one understands this uh, correctly, if one um, properly understands um, this cause arise uh, from this cause arises this effect. If one gets um, the the sign uh, of dependent origination um, and properly um, ascertains that, that um, uh, causes one to uh, extricate from the root um, this view of annihilation. So if one has a proper understanding of um, things being dependently originated, that removes the extreme view of annihilation. And if one, um, by, by bringing forth certainty in the meaning of the thesis, um, that things lack intrinsic existence, then um, one is able to uh, refute from its root um, the uh, view of permanence. So here, um, this is again getting at the way that the two extremes are dispelled by a proper understanding of this logical proof. So if one understands dependent origination, uh, this cause leading to this effect and, and has a certainty in that, that um, eliminates uh, from the root this uh, view of annihilation. And if one properly, um, if one ascertains the meaning of the thesis, then that is able to um, get rid of uh, the view of permanence. Oh, <laughs> So here um, then um, it says, um, <clears throat> continuing uh, to go through this uh, logical proof, um, that uh, whatever is um, dependently uh, originated, whatever originates uh, from causes such as a sprout and so forth, is not suitable to be established intrinsically um, because uh, that that thing, um, if it were um, established intrinsically, uh, sort of set up autonomously from its own side, then that would contradict relying upon causes and conditions. So um, here uh, then for um, the lower tenant schools, um, including even um, the autonomy school and below, they would assert that uh, things are um, dependently originated. Um, if they are dependently originated, they are intrinsically existent. And so here it's trying to show that uh, whatever is um, in dependently originated uh, is not suitable to be intrinsically established. Um, because that kind of intrinsic establishment uh, set up autonomously from its own side is in contradiction to relying upon causes and conditions. So as opposed to the kind of understanding that the lower schools have that whatever is um, dependently originated is intrinsically existent, um, here it's showing that uh, that, that can't be the case uh, because um, being dependently originated and having some sort of intrinsic establishment um, would mean that it wouldn't rely upon on causes and conditions, and that's what it means to be dependently originated. So here it's showing the contradiction um, between those. Okay. Any 
Then by Chenga, Guinea, Carreras and a Guinea Giard. No, Tingy, and it's a new Walla, Dinzin Tower Maluchi Bukos, Dinzin Tower Malibuchi Bukos, didn't teach you what you hear. So, um, as uh, we saw in um, this text, uh, the in praise of dependent origination, um, it's verse six here that says, um, "By grasping at it, the childish strengthen bondage to extreme views. For the wise, this very fact is the doorway to cut free from the net of elaborations." So here, <clears throat> where it says, um, "By grasping at it, um, the childish are strengthening bondage to extreme views," um, this is uh, the way that the lower tenant school are holding, um, they say that things um, are dependently originated, or uh, things are intrinsically existent because they are dependently originated. So um, in reliance upon um, dependent origination, they're actually um, strengthening their bondage to this extreme view of things being intrinsically existent. Um, but for those who are wise, for those who understand it correctly, um, the reason of dependent origination is actually uh, what is able to cut free from all of these this net of elaborations. So um, those who grasp at um, dependent origination as meaning intrinsic existence or using the fact that things are dependently originated to establish their intrinsic existence, they're just strengthening their kind of extreme views. Whereas someone who understands it properly is able to uh, cut through all, all of that. Oh yeah, that didn't it? Then and so um, here then, uh, so this uh, first um, uh, iteration of the uh, reason of dependent origination um, is, is being used in relation to things that rely upon um, causes and uh, conditions. And so um, this is uh, the sort of um, uh, logical proof of uh, production um, through dependence. Uh, so here, though, um, for things that are um, not um, uh, produced from causes and conditions, to uh, present a kind of logical proof that is um, inclusive of uh, whatever phenomenon, uh, whether it depends upon causes and conditions or not, um, then it lays out here what is called um, the logical proof of um, designation independence. And so here, um, uh, it says then uh, the the person um, pots and so forth just illustrations of various uh, things all internal and external phenomena are not uh, suitable to be established intrinsically um, because it is the case that they are designated in dependence upon um, the, the collection their own group or collection so um, here it, it is because um, that things are um, dependently designated um, that they are uh, not suitable to be intrinsically established. So um, this uh, this logical proof doesn't just apply to those things which rely upon causes and conditions, um, but but is inclusive of all phenomena as they're all uh, designated in dependence upon their own uh, sort of group or collection here. Um, and so um, whatever uh, is uh, generated um, or is produced uh, dependently um, and so, so these things that are um 
sorry, uh, de produced um, dependently and designated dependently, um, there are no, uh, they don't have any sort of intrinsic existence, and so those things can't be um, intrinsically existent as one, as a single thing, or um, intrinsically uh, existent as uh, many. So we saw uh, previously uh, the sort of um, proof, um, the reasonings that are used to uh, establish that you can't have, um, like, say, the self and the aggregates intrinsically existent as one um, for the, the sort of uh, reasonings of uh, it being meaningless to give another name and, and so forth. And then um, the uh, reasonings that prove that they cannot be intrinsically established as other, um, as in there would be the problem, the fault of there being no connection um, between them and so forth. And so uh, here, um, this uh, the, these proofs of not just um, things being dependently produced, but also their being dependently designated um, then lead into the proof of showing that things can't be intrinsically established as one or as different. Oh yeah. That <laughs> え、那天天想把人家去出吧 Tata 大家也太虚过吧 so, um, here, uh, then by gaining a uh, kind of uh, certainty uh, in the fact that uh, things are um, dependently designated, uh, dependently uh, produced, um, one uh, brings forth certainty that they cannot be um, intrinsically uh, established, and then um, they can't be um, intrinsically uh, established as, as a single thing, or um, uh, if they are... Um, Intrinsically established as a single thing, there would be certain faults uh, that would that would incur from that, and um, they can't be intrinsically uh, established as other um, because uh, then um, there would be it would not be suitable to have any sort of connection with the others, and there wouldn't be any contingency or dependency. Um, so here, uh, getting into uh, the way that this is explained, then um, in uh, the uh, root uh, verses um, on on wisdom uh, by Nagarjuna, um, it's says uh, then um, that uh, whatever is um, dependently uh, originated, whatever uh, or, or, yeah, comes forth um, in dependence, um, then that uh, thing is um, <sighs> So uh, it's it's not um, the the very thing. It's not intrinsically existent as that very thing, or not neither not um, that very thing. It's not established as something other than that, um, and therefore uh, by by using this kind of logical uh, proof, uh, one um, uh, gets away from um, the uh, extreme of annihilation and the extreme of permanence. Uh, so here, um, one establishes uh, that whatever is dependently originated. Um, cannot be intrinsically existent as as one uh, thing, or intrinsically in, in, established as totally uh, separate. And so um, here, this is uh, sort of uh, refuting any kind of extremes of being um, 
uh, this either one, um, either different or um, neither uh, single nor different, um, or both uh, single and different. This is refuting those four uh, kind of extremes um, along with uh, the uh, view of permanence and annihilation um, by this, this proof. So whatever it is that is dependently originated, um, it's not that very thing. It's, it's not intrinsically established as one, nor is it um, intrinsically established as something other. And so um, in that way, it's neither permanent uh, nor totally non-existent. And then um, it continues out of the quotation um, talking about uh, that one um, then goes into examining whether it is um, existent as uh, singular or different and, in, and goes through the four different, uh, it refutes the four extremes um, with this kind of reasoning. Oh so um, here uh, then um, this uh, sort of reasoning um, refuting uh, the four uh, extremes um, uh, this uh, none of these methods uh, goes beyond the sort of uh, investigation of something of all things being either sort of absent of one or many um, and then uh, continuing it says uh, so there are um, various uh, sort of methods for uh, refuting um, the four extremes of production as well as establishing um, the way in which um, the, the, there's sort of a five-fold reasoning and seven uh, fold reasoning um, that one can apply in order to uh, uh, engage in a type of refutation. Um, so the um, reasoning, uh, uh, refuting the four extremes of production, um, then is refuting that something is um, produced uh, from itself, from another, from both self and other, or from neither of those. And then uh, when one gets into the kind of reasoning um, that the self uh, doesn't inherently uh, exist um, as uh, being the same as the aggregates or being other than the aggregates, um, not being the sort of basis of the aggregates, um, not depending on the aggregates, and not possessing the aggregates. Um, and here you could you could apply that that fivefold um, reasoning to uh, any any phenomena. Um, and then uh, Chandrakirti adds uh, two two other layers of um, investigation, saying that the self is not um, the sort of composite uh, the uh, of the aggregates, nor is it uh, like the shape or the arrangement of the aggregates. And so using these um, types of reasoning, uh, one refutes the possibility of an inherently existent self. Um, and so one should know the way in which one is able to like expand uh, the, the method of um, investigation using these various different types of reasoning. Oh yeah. Tell Mm. So, um, here, uh, uh, in reliance, um, 
uh, investigating um, this way in which things are uh, dependently originated um, like that. Uh, one, um, if you uh, bring forth um, a certainty of emptiness, uh, which uh, destroys all sort of object grasping of grasping at signs or grasping at things as being um, truly existent. Um, so based upon um, investigating the way in which things are dependently originated, one brings forth an understanding of emptiness, a certainty about emptiness. And um, so if one brings forth that uh, certainty about emptiness, it's very important that one doesn't um, discard one's uh, certainty or one's ascertainment of um, karma, of cause and effect. Uh, so here, um, this is, uh, we've talked about this uh, a lot now, that one needs to be able to properly uh, distinguish between um, uh, existing um, intrinsically and merely existing and lacking intrinsic existence and being completely non-existent. And so here, um, it's very important that if one um, uh, refutes intrinsic existence, that you are still able to posit karma, cause and effect, in order to avoid um, falling into some kind of extreme of um, total non-existence. And this is uh, predicated on being able to distinguish between something being intrinsically existent and merely existent, and something lacking intrinsic existent and being totally non-existent. So um, here, one can... Um, think uh, on the basis of examples like um, a, an illusion and a reflection and so forth um, in the way that uh, they, they appear as though they had some kind of intrinsic existence but they don't really exist in that way. So if you have um, like an illusory horse or an elephant or something, it appears as though it had some kind of intrinsic existence but through these reasonings you have established that it doesn't have that kind of um, intrinsic existence. Um, or like uh, the reflection of a face in a mirror, although it appears as being like a real face, it doesn't exist as such. And so um, these uh, examples are used in order to uh, illustrate uh, this point about how things um, appear in one way but actually exist in another way. Oh yeah, Tema あの、<音><音><音><音> So um, here, uh, then, um, the way that uh, things appear, they appear as though they had some kind of uh, true existence, um, but they actually lack uh, that sort of true existence. And so one um, trains in the way that things appear as illusory, as like illusions, having this um, uh, appearance as existing in one way, um, but not really um, appearing or not really existing in that way. Um, and so uh, here, um, there is there are sort of like. Um, uh, misunderstandings that can arise or uh, mistaken, mistakenly thinking that you have come uh, to the view. Um, so here um, one needs to really uh, have an understanding of uh, how it is that um, when um, appearance and emptiness are understood in harmony there is um, appearance of things as being illusory. Um, but so uh, for example um, in the uh, sort of um, for those who are meditating on impermanence and below um, they may have the these sort of uh, a certain way that things arise um, in in the period subsequent to meditation, um, as though uh, they sort of see things differently after meditation. But this is not actually um, coming to see things as being um, illus like illusions. And so, uh, due to the sort of power of the mind um, to abide in in um, 
meditative uh, concentration or uh, with some sort of stability to that. Um, there are some times uh, where um, people uh, in the periods of subsequent attainment um, see all sorts of like kind of visions almost. Um, it's almost as though they could like count the tiny atoms in a wall or something like that. They, they or that they don't uh, feel like things are uh, obstructing their, the, there's no uh, obstructive contact and so forth. Um, so there are these various uh, sorts of appearances um, that can arise um, during the time of uh, subsequent um, uh, attainment. Um, or maybe someone um, at the time of subsequent attainment is merely um, having like nothing whatsoever in their mind and that that's what's appearing to them. Um, but here, uh, this is, um, these are all not really uh, the appearance of things as being illusory um, during the time of subsequent attainment. Um, this is not what it is referring to here. So uh, set aside the um, consequentialist or autonomous view. Uh, this, these sorts of appearances um, are not even um, uh, the way that one sustains uh, the view of the mind-only school during periods of subsequent attainment. Oh yeah, I think you're going to ask me to cover Similarly,被接受的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人
Um, but uh, therefore, uh, one um, should should understand, um, one needs to understand um, the way in which one sustains uh, the view in um, uh, periods of subsequent attainment as well as meditative equipoise um, according to the uh, mind-only tradition and so forth. So one needs to have an understanding of how it is that uh, one sustains the view during meditative equipoise. And here there will be um, significant uh, differences um, in terms of the subtlety of uh, the object of negation and so forth, the subtlety of the selflessness realized, as well as how one goes about um, sustaining that view in the periods of subsequent attainment. Um, and during the periods of uh, subsequent attainment, the way the, the, that one sustains the view may be uh, more similar to the other uh, schools, whereas during meditative equipoise, um, there is a, a great deal of difference between the subtlety of the object of negation and the subtlety of the selflessness realized and so forth. So we'll stop there for today. Jayan 